All right, welcome. This is Freddie Hodges with Duke Report, Blue Devils Blog, and cheers to the 2023 Duke football season that will be starting uh, Labor Day. Before I uh, give my quick thoughts on the Duke football season, got to give a shout out to the Military Bowl for the cool beanie hat. Um, as we know, Duke beat UCF in the Military Bowl for the first bowl win in the first season of the Elko era. Uh, yeah, never a bad hair day. All right, joke's here all day, people. I'm here all day. Um, next, got to give a shout-out to the Section 17 podcast guys. Uh, sporting one of their T-shirts today, Elko Era. If you haven't already, follow uh, Section 17 podcast guys, their website, as well as their awesome podcast. Gives in-depth uh, knowledge on Duke football. All right, let's take a look at the Duke football season. Last night, the ACC Network released uh, the ACC schedule, and um, now we have all 12 games for the Duke football season. Um, if you're like me, it took a little while to get through that two hours of uh, the ACC Network's football schedule. Um, it was, let's just say, entertaining at, at best. But shout out to Duke Football's social media creative content team for the videos that they released by per game basis. Uh, some of my favorite videos at Duke Football Twitter's creative content team released. The uh, Dabo Sprint into Wallace Wade Stadium had me rolling. Um, the Florida State video with the crab legs. If you, if you know, you know. That one's, that one's my number one. That one was awesome. Uh, the gender reveal UNC Duke um, uh, was another great one. And um, let's see, the NC State Wolfpack repellent. Those were some of my favorite videos. So shout out to Duke Football's Twitter, their creative content team. All right. With that said, let's take a look at the game-by-game -game schedule. Monday, September 4th, Labor Day. Duke versus Clemson at Wallace Wade Stadium. Um Opened it up the season, Labor Day weekend, uh, Labor Day, excuse me, Monday, should be an electric atmosphere in Wallace Wade Stadium. I think there's a possibility of three sellout games at Duke this year. This is number one. Clemson fans, they travel well, and uh, I expect this, like I said, to be an electric atmosphere. Uh, let me go ahead and tell you, if you haven't already, Duke fans, Go ahead and get that doctor's note, call in sick for Tuesday, September 5th, because uh, Wallace Wade Stadium will be rocking Labor Day, and we'll want to extend that uh, weekend and make it not a three-day weekend, but let's make it a four-day weekend. All right, cheers on that. Next, two home games in a row, Duke versus, oh, let me go back to Duke Clemson. Duke Clemson. Clemson finished 11-3 last year. They lost to Tennessee 31-14 in the Capital One Orange Bowl. So this will be, like I said, a big battle and a possible sellout. All right, up next, Duke versus Lafayette. Um, September 9th. Lafayette last season finished with a record of 4-7. Um, I'm expecting this as a, a hopefully a most likely win for Duke. Would be awesome to start the season 2-0 with a huge win over Clemson and a win over Lafayette. Or at worst, 1-1. One one. All right, third game of the season. We have three home games in a row at Wallace Wade Stadium. Duke takes on Northwestern. Maybe it's me, but it seems like we play Northwestern almost every year. I don't have the stats in front of me, but I know we have played them for so many years of the past six or seven years. Uh, last year, we beat Northwestern 31-23 on the road at Northwestern. Um, this is another of my four games I have that I think are must-win games. Lafayette is one. Northwestern is two. When I say must-win games, I'm trying to get to a – this is at the bare minimum. I'm trying to get to six wins and get to bowl eligibility. I think this Duke team has everything to – to go undefeated, I think this Duke team could finish with a nine-win season. I think they could finish 10 wins or more, but they have a brutal schedule. So there are four games I've highlighted while I'm talking right now that are must-wins. Uh, Lafayette was one, and Northwestern was another. All right. Um, fourth game of the season, Duke finally gets on the road and travels to UConn. 
Connecticut last year were 6-7. and seven. They lost to Marshall 28-14 in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. And um, this is another, the three out of four must-win games, I think, is uh, winning at UConn. To finish September, Duke plays Notre Dame Saturday, September 30th at Wallace Wade Stadium. Uh, the three games that I think could be sellouts, possible sellouts. Number one, Clemson, Labor Day. Number two, Notre Dame, September 30th. We all know Notre Dame fans travel really well. Um, Duke fans need to be ready for this game. Need to pack out Wallace Wade Stadium. This game will be a battle. Um, I remember us losing to Notre Dame 38-7 in 2019 at Wallace Wade Stadium. I actually took my buddy to the game. He was a Notre Dame fan. Sitting beside of me, uh, it was packed out with a lot of Notre Dame fans. So, Duke fans, if you haven't got your season tickets yet, go ahead and get them. We've got two epic games already I've discussed, Clemson and Notre Dame, and we are only through the month of September. Looking back at September's breakdown, um, we have five games. I think we need three wins at minimum, in my opinion. I think Lafayette needs to be a win. I think Northwestern needs to be a win. I think uh, UConn needs to be a win. Four out of five wins would be great. Five and zero oh would be amazing. But at bare minimum, I think for Duke to start to Duke football to start the season off right, I think we need three wins. Because the schedule doesn't get any easier in October. So uh, let's look at uh, October. Oh, before I go back to October, Notre Dame uh, finished last season 11 and 2, lost to Oklahoma State 37 35 in the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. All right, now let's move to October. We start off October, week one, a bye week. October 7th will be a bye week. And then October 14th, Duke versus North Carolina State. Uh, the three games at Wallace Wade Stadium, I think, could be sellouts. Number one, Clemson Labor Day. Like I said, number two, Notre Dame, September 30th. And then NC State, October 14th, middle of October. Guys, Raleigh Durham, Durham Raleigh, however you like to call it, that joke that goes around. The, the distance is not far. We all know NC State fans will be traveling easy for this game. We need Duke fans to pack this one out. I expect possible sellout for this game. Uh, with the new 355 format, we will now be playing NC State um, every season for the foreseeable future. Whereas, you know, it has been a, quite a while since we played NC State. So it's good to actually have a home and away series happening with NC State. Um, October 21st, next. Oh, NC State. Last season, 8-5. Lost to Maryland, 16-12 in the Duke's Mayor Bowl. Um, Duke's Mayor Bowl, if you're listening, that could have been Duke playing in the Mayo Bowl, but just saying. Anyway, that's a topic for another time. But um, up next, all right, October uh, 24, uh, October, excuse me, 21st at Florida State. Last year, Florida State finished with a 10-3 record, defeated Oklahoma 35-32 in the Cheez-It Bowl. The schedule gets tougher. We got two away games in a row at Florida State at Louisville. Um, Duke has never beat Florida State. It would be great to finally get a win against Florida State and even better to get the win on the road. Um, this is another huge game, another big battle for Duke. All right, with that said, um, next away game, Duke at Louisville. Louisville last year was 8-5. and five. They fe uh, defeated Cincinnati 24-7 in the Wasiba Fenway Bowl. Um, again, need to get another win against a team we have not beat yet. We have not beat Louisville before. Um, I think we got back-to-back -back really tough road games, but I think Duke can pull it out. Um, let's look at a breakdown of the month of October. In October, we have an open date, 
NC State home at Florida State at Louisville. So an open date, one home game, and two at two away games. Um, we don't need three losses in October, not at all. I think at minimal, we need one win in October, but more is better. Guys, when I'm talking um, at minimum, I'm talking about trying to reach the six wins bowl game minimum to try to get to a bowl game. Of course, I think we can do better in that, but if you're looking at this schedule, it's a brutal schedule. So for the month of October, I think we need one win at minimum. Two and one during the stretch of October would be great. Three and oh would be amazing. And that closes out the month of October for Duke football. Let's check out November. All right. If you're still staying with me, Duke versus Wake Forest. Uh, November 2nd, Thursday night game. Um, this is right around the start, and this is a guess, of the Duke basketball season. So I'm just throwing this out there, Duke basketball, if you're watching this. A Thursday night game in Wallace Wade Stadium versus Wake Forest. And a Friday night home game, Duke basketball game versus whoever would be an awesome weekend in Durham. Just throwing that out there. It happens sometime. Sometime the stars align and you're able to catch a Duke football game and a Duke basketball game back-to-back -back days in Durham. Um, this could possibly be one of those, but um, we're middle of the basketball season right now, so who knows what 2023-2024 uh, Duke basketball has. But um, I love Thursday night games. I love Friday night games. I really love Thursday night games. I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, the reason I like Thursday night games, personal uh, preference, is I can go ahead and start my hiking weekend early. Um, and I know my buddy Jamie with the Section 17 podcast can start his beach vacations early with a Thursday night game at Wallace Wade. Um, last year, we closed the season with a win over Wake Forest and Wallace Wade. Um, this year, we have the 355 schedule with Wake Forest. So we have them um, two years in a row at Wallace Wade Stadium. So this is another game I'm looking forward to. Uh, Wake Forest last year. Let's check it out. Defeated 8-5 uh, uh, and five record last year for Wake Forest. Defeated Missouri 27-17 in the Union Home Mortgage Gasparilla Bowl. All right. Up next, the robbery game. Duke versus UNC, Saturday, November 18th. Um, <clears throat> UNC's record last year, 9-5. and five. They lost to Oregon, 28-27 in the San Diego Credit Union Holiday Bowl. Hey, let's bring that victory bell back to Durham. It's it, Duke fans, we know it's been a while. Let's bring the victory bell back to Durham. Um, and this is my plea to all Duke fans if you're watching this. When UNC's individual game tickets go on sale, whenever that happens, Duke fans, Buy the tickets. Uh, the distance from Durham to UNC is under 30 minutes. Let's pack out um, Keenan Stadium and um, let's represent in the rivalry game and bring that victory bell back home. As you already know, this rivalry game needs no introduction, but it's happening Saturday, November 18th. All right, so, um, Duke at UVA, Saturday. I'm sorry. The Duke-UNC game is happening Saturday, November 11th. All right, Saturday, November 18th, Duke at UVA. Duke gets back on the road for, uh, we got two away games in a row. This is one of four games I think Duke must win. Virginia last year's record was 3-7. and seven. I don't know what it is, but UNC has had our number over the years. And I think we finally need to, uh, we won last year against uh, Virginia at home. I think we need to win at Virginia on the road. And of the four games that I think are must wins, uh, Virginia is one of them. All right, Duke closes out the season. Duke uh, versus Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh last year was 9-4. and four. They defeated UCLA 37-35 in the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. If Duke fans remember the bowl projections last year, it seemed like it was either Military Bowl or the Sun Bowl in El Paso. And I'm thankful 
as somebody that was able to travel close by that we got that military bowl. Um, this is Thanksgiving weekend, Saturday, November 25th. Um, I thought we would have Wake Forest as our last game of the season. I thought that's the way things were setting up. At the same time, I'm glad um, we have Wake Forest on a Thursday night game. I love Thursday night games. But here it is. Duke is playing Pittsburgh to close out the season. Um, if you look at the schedule, there are seven home games. Duke fans, if you haven't bought your tickets yet, um, I would go ahead and get your season tickets. Of the 12 games, if you're willing to travel three hours or less, you can make two more away games. Chapel Hill, the distance from Durham to Chapel Hill is about 30 minutes. We, Duke fans, we can show up in Chapel Hill. Charlottesville, UVA, the distance from Durham to Charlottesville is about three hours and 15 minutes. Uh, you can show up at UVA and represent. So with that saying, nine of the 12 games are seven are at home and two more are not a far travel for Duke fans. The ones that would require travel would be, of course, at Connecticut, at Louisville and at Florida State. And I got to get stop for a moment, stop for a moment and give a shout out to the hard hat guys for traveling to all of the games. All right. With that said. I said there are four must-win games. Um, the four must-win games, I think, to get the schedule, uh, to get the schedule moving and flowing. Lafayette, Northwestern, Connecticut, Virginia. I think those need to be, I'm not saying easy wins, but those need to be wins. I think that will set the pace for us to get bowl eligible and move forward. Now, with that said, Freddie's Blue Double Blue Devils blog, five games I'm looking forward to. Labor Day weekend versus Clemson. I think it's a possible sellout. I think it's going to be a rocking time in Wallace Wade Stadium. My second game I'm looking forward to, Saturday, September 30th versus Notre Dame. Let's uh, let's beat the Irish. Let's, uh, let's turn the luck upside down for now. My third game I'm looking forward to, it's great to see North Carolina State back playing Duke, whether it's at NC State or at Wallace Wade. Hey, we got them at Duke this year. October 14th. Looking forward to that game as well. Fourth game I'm looking forward to. Thursday night game versus Wake Forest. Um, I think Wake Forest is becoming a little bit of a rivalry as well as I love Thursday night games. I think this will be another happening game for um, at Wallace Wade Stadium. And of course, last and you know definitely not least, the fifth game I'm looking forward to at UNC November um November 11th, uh, let's 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 show up, Duke fans, in Chapel Hill, and let's pack that place out, and let's bring that victory bell home. As far as uh, Duke Report, Blue Devils blog, record prediction, I'm not putting that out till sometime this summer. Uh, you can expect a record prediction from me sometime probably around August. Um, I did predict the bowl game last season. Um Duke versus UCF in the Military Bowl, November 25th. That was about a week or so before bowl projections came out, so I did do okay with that. Shout out to my to myself on that one, but um, I did predict Duke versus UCF in the Military Bowl. I think this team has the ability to battle well in the ACC this year, and I think great things can happen under the second season of the Elko era. Uh, if you've listened this far, I appreciate you checking out my video. Follow us on Twitter at Duke Report. Follow my personal Twitter at Skilo22. And uh, follow the blog, bluedevilsblog.com. And I'll finish this also with following a couple of my friends. Follow the guys at the Section 17 podcast, whether it's their podcast or website. Those guys are killing it with Duke football. And follow my other friend, Bull City Coordinators, as he well gives in-depth knowledge for Duke football. Um, I think I've covered the Duke football season. We've got a while before Labor Day happens, so I hope you enjoy the rest of your year. And uh, looking forward to the 2023 Duke football season. And uh, let's do it. Let's get to another bowl game. And uh, the sky's the limit in the Elko era. All right. <laughs>